topic, guttural pouch mycosis, which is normally found in equine. I'm not sure if it's found in other species. Um, I learned about this disease. It's not very common, but I learned about it from working at the large animal facility over the summer. We had a possible guttural pouch mycosis case come in. I was kind of interested in it because it was an emergency case. Um, mm -hmm. And so I went home and looked it up and found the topic to be quite in interesting. Mm -hmm. so. So what is a guttural pouch? The guttural pouch um, is an extension of the eustachian tube, which is found in the middle ear. And then if you look at this diagram here, it is this like yellow sac in both sides. Um, so there's two like nodes of the guttural pouch. And then you can see here that there are common carotid arteries that run really close. You have nerves that run super close to this. And then on the other side is their throat. Uh, we're not 100% sure what the function of this guttural pouch is. Scientists think that maybe it's a resonating chamber for vocalization, cools blood traveling to the brain, warms air traveling to the lungs, and can be used for pressure equalization in the ear. And then here we have an uh, inside view of the guttural pouch. So this structure here labeled A is the stylophoid bone that splits the guttural pouch into the medial side and the lateral side. The structure labeled D is the internal carotid artery. F is the hypoglossal and glossopharyngeal nerves, and these nerves control upper airway function, um, swallowing function, tongue movement, and some facial functions also. Um, F is the external carotid artery, and G up here is the maxillary artery. So again, you can see there's some major nerves that run through here and some pretty important uh, um, blood vessels too. So guttural pouch mycosis is a fungal infection of one or both sides of the guttural pouch. Uh, again, it's not exactly known uh, how horses get it, what they get it from, but most common fungus is the aspergillus fungus and there's no age, sex, or geological predisposition so your horse can be anywhere at any age, uh, male, female, and your horse uh, has the potential of getting this disease. So some symptoms. Uh, there's two main symptoms which are nosebleeds and dysphagia. Nosebleeds are almost always labeled as emergency cases um, and this occurs when the fungus attacks those blood vessels in the guttural pouch. Um, and since they're arteries, they can be fatal. Uh, and then dysophagia is difficulty swallowing. So this occurs when the fungus damages those nerves that control the tongue and swallowing movements um, and then can cause issues with swallowing. This symptom is a little harder to see. Most people uh, will notice if their horses are dropping food more out of their mouth because their tongue isn't pushing the food to the back of their throat. Um, or maybe even uh, upper airway function problems when exercising. Some other symptoms include Horner syndrome, which is drooping eyelids, swunk, sunken eyes, constricted pupils, or patchy sweating on the neck, white nasal discharge, abnormal head posture, and pain in the throat latch area. So for diagnosis, uh, you pretty much have to do endoscopy, which is a small tube with a camera and a light passed through their nasal cavity uh, into the guttural pouch and you can see blood clots or fungal plaques. So this is a blood clot here. This is a normal opening of the guttural pouch and then this is like an abnormal or affected area. So you can see this blood clot. This probably would have been seen in a horse that was had nosebleeds. And then over in this picture, you can see here on the stylohoid bone, these fungal plaques are attacking this. And then again, here are some very large blood vessels that can run through here. So you pretty much have to get a tube down your horse's throat to diagnose this. So for treatment, there's two different kinds. You can do medical treatments. Um, most vets are not going to recommend this. Medical treatments take a really long time. You infuse the antifungal agents into the guttural pouch. Um, and because it takes a long time to get this done, those fungal plaques can still eat away at those arteries causing fatal hemorrhaging. And then there's two different kinds of surgeries. You can do balloon catheter occlusion of the internal carotid artery or transarterial coil or plug, embol plug embolism. And the way that these work is that they go in and kind of stop blood flow and this blood flow 
doesn't allow for the fungal plaques or the lesions at this point to have a food source because they're feeding off of that blood that they're getting from the arteries and it causes the lesions to regress. So for the balloon catheter occlusion, they take an inflated balloon and stick it into a small incision in the horse's upper neck. Um, this is attached to a flexible catheter, which is inserted through the internal carotid artery. And then once it's correct, correctly positioned, they will inflate the balloon to stop the flow of blood through that artery. Um, they'll go in and check the animal again through endoscopy to make sure that these lesions are regressing on these arteries and then they can remove the balloon and catheter one to four weeks after surgery. For the transarterial coil or plug embolism, they take these small coils, which you can see here in these pictures, um, and this causes there, it's the same thing, once it's placed correctly, the coils are meant to expand to stop the blood flow or cause rapid blood clotting. Um, but this procedure requires fluoroscopic guidance, so you can see here the blood flow and then the stopped blood flow through these arteries. Um, and because this one is a little bit more specialized equipment, it's not as widely available for all vets to use. Um, but this also eliminates variability between the different arteries. So whether a horse's artery lays a little bit differently or bends a little differently, this will kind of help um, find those specific spots for those coils. So the prognosis, what happens afterwards. For surgical treatment, if the horse had nosebleeds, the lesions generally will regress between 30 and 180 days, and your horse will pretty much make a full recovery if you catch it in time before uh, fatal hemorrhaging. For nerve function, recovery and therapy may take 6 to 18 months um, and some horses may never fully recover. If you don't catch it in time, those nerves can be damaged so severely that they don't get function back. And then for medical treatment, again, it's not generally um, recommended because it can take 3 to 5 months for this treatment to work and horses may bleed out before the treatment has even been finished. And this is the source that I use to find all of this information. Let's give her a round of applause. Awesome. <laughs> Wonderful. Not for the horse, but you know, for us to learn. Questions, comments? So with the surgical treatment, do they also, after they stop the bleeding, do they then also give the antifungals? Uh, so the question was, during surgical treatment, do, do they also infuse antifungals? I did not find any information. I think that if they go back in and after a week, if the lesions hadn't regressed, I would think that the vets would go ahead and do a round of antifungals to help those lesions go away. But the point of the surgery is because you're taking away that food source, the lesions should just go away on their own. But they might spray some in just as long as you're there. Yeah. <laughs> is this a fast acting bacteria? Like how much time would it have to take from like the point of infection to a nosebleed, from a nosebleed to hemorrhaging, or to the um, like having like the mouth popping? No, it's a fungus. Oh, a fungus. I'm sorry. So the question was, how fast acting is the fungus? Um, I think it's pretty quick. I think a few days, your horse can get it, um, and then you will start seeing symptoms. With the nosebleeds, like I said, like once your horse, the case that we had did not have guttural pouch mycosis, um, but they had said he'd been bleeding for four days from his nose, um, and all of the vets were thinking that he wasn't gonna even make it to the hospital, that he was gonna end up bleeding out okay. on a trailer because they didn't think, they figured he was going to have a fatal hemorrhage. Okay. Uh, I apologize if you already mentioned it, but uh, what was the exact antifungal I actually used for this? The question was, what's the antifungal? I'm not sure. Not sure? Okay. No, I couldn't find any information about what exact antifungal medication they would give. Um, you no, I don't know. There was another question. I'm just curious, how um, rare is this? Like, since you said that it's not really known how it's caused or the predisposition, is it a relatively rare thing that happens? Or uh, is it pretty common? Yeah, so the question was if the if this disease is rare, uh, and it is. I actually tried to look up an incident report, um, mm -hmm. and it's not really reported at all. There were no like reported case, like not very many reported cases or like 
where they were found. There are some research papers done on it, so I think the medical world knows about it, but there just isn't like enough cases to do enough research to find out more information.